We have a podcast. Diving, diving deep. deep. Diving deep into all things Texas. Both on and off the field. Here's Sean Pendergast. And Pro Football Hall of Famer, the General. Sean McClain. Welcome. Welcome. Welcome to Utopia. So, um, so let's get into the Texans roster, John. 53-man roster. And I'll get into your thoughts just on surprises in just a second. But the big story especially on the heels of Nick Casario's press conference earlier this morning, is Kenyon Green, the 15th overall pick last season in 2022, going to IR. He had a, he had a real struggle of a rookie season last year. Um, he was banged up coming into the league. He was banged up in the offseason. He's still apparently dealing with a shoulder injury of some sort that led to him playing with backups and not well in the third preseason game against New Orleans. And now the Texans have just decided to punt on 2023 with Kenyon Green put him on IR, presumably get surgery, let him get well, and hopefully get in shape too, and and become some semblance of the player they thought they were getting with the 15th overall pick. Before I get your thoughts, the last thing, John, is that Nick Casario had an interesting quote today in that press conference where he said they knew it was a matter of when, not if, this might happen with Kenyon Green. The implication being that they just hoped he'd be able to play through it this season then get it fixed later. Um, obviously, that was not the case like they need to get this thing fixed now uh shoulder injury I believe it is um so John what are your I guess thought just general thoughts here on Kenyon Green going to injured reserve Kenyon's got issues beyond uh his injury issues D'Amico Ryan's uh on Sunday I mean on Monday I asked him about Kenyon and he said I'm proud of Kenyon, what he's dealing with, what he's overcome. I said, you mean injuries? And he hesitated, and he acted like there was something else there, but he said yes. And then Nick said, not only is he dealing with injuries, he's dealing with personal issues. Mm -hmm. So whatever those personal issues are, whether it's with Kenyon or whether it's with people close to him, we don't know, but this is good for him. Problem is, it's left a huge hole where we thought would be solidified when they made him the 15th overall pick from Texas A&M. And now their offensive line is, is just got shambles. big holes. Yeah. It's in, it's in shambles. Add to that juice Scruggs dealing with a hamstring Titus Howard, his status is still up in the air for week one. Uh, Nick Casario said today that Titus should be back pretty soon, but they're still working through the Titus Howard issue. Yeah, so yeah, didn't. He didn't, excuse me, he didn't, I asked him about Titus too. He didn't sound confident like he was coming back. It wasn't, well, we, 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 he will be back. Yeah, 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 well, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah no, he, for, I'm I, guessing right now Titus ain't playing against the Ravens. I would I would say the same thing. I get, Yeah, I guess what I'm thinking of is that Titus and Charlie Heck got bu- grouped into the same question. That You asked the question, John, about those two? Yeah. They got kind of grouped into the same question. So maybe I'm just thinking of Nick saying that Titus will definitely be back sooner than Charlie will be back. Um, and, we don't know if Charlie will play this year. You know, yeah. he was a swing tackle. There are reports yep. it's a foot injury. I watched him walk all through training camp with no issues whatsoever. But now he's going to be out for a minimum of four games, and and uh, he might not play this season. So that swing tackle is either going to be George Fant or maybe it's going to be Josh Jones. But, yeah. uh, man, right when you thought their fourth line coach in four years, Chris Strasser, was coming into a good situation. He's got more problems than anybody he, on the staff. He does, and they're protecting a rookie quarterback. They're protecting the most valuable, the most valuable guy in the building over there in, in CJ Stroud. So that's again, again, again against Baltimore. I mean, those first few games, Baltimore, Indianapolis, not a good football team, but they've got a pretty good front seven on defense. Um, you know, Jacksonville has some guys who can get after the passer as well. And then obviously Pittsburgh is one of the best defenses in all of football. So, um, it's, it's tough sledding those first, uh, those first five games, just in terms of the, the matchups couldn't be worse in some ways, uh, in those first four games of the season. Um, Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more content like this. If you want to see more of our videos, be sure to check out our playlist and let us know what you think in the comments below. Also, don't forget to follow us on social media to stay up to date on our latest updates. Links are in the description. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.